Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Uh, mine's going really good. Hey, uh, I wanted to talk to you for just a minute about the book of James. And I want to go over a couple of things that's in the first chapter of James. James is the Proverbs of the New Testament. And as a matter of fact, James, along with Jude, almost got kicked out of the Bible. Uh, the Council of Laodicea in the 4th century, when they took out the book of Enoch because they didn't like what it said, they were considering taking out Jude and James because they didn't like what these two books said. Mainly they said that, uh, that James was teaching works, which it's not, and Jude was talking about the book of Enoch. He quoted it. So uh, anyway, the Lord left James in there. So this is what it says in James 1, verse 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Guys, listen. When a temptation comes upon you, you don't, you don't mess with it. You don't try to go around it. What you do is, with faith, as you walk right through it. When something happens, you walk right through it. You ask the Lord for help, and you just go straight through it. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised them that love him. If you walk right through the middle of a temptation, and don't sit, don't get sidetracked with the temptation. Don't give in to it. Just walk right through it. If you do that, you will receive the crown of life when you get to the gates of heaven. Verse 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We can all use that one, including myself. Swift to hear, slow to speak. James is telling us this. He's saying, listen, before you speak, stop, think about what you're going to say before you say it. And if we would all do that, I think about 90% of our problems would go away. The next one, verse 22, James tells us, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. When you read something in the Bible and God says to your heart and you go, yeah, Lord, I need to work on that. And that happens to me every single day. God says something to me in the Bible and I say, yeah, I need to work on that. Well, listen, when God tells you that, don't just say I need to work on that. Work on it. Do it. That's what James is saying. Don't be a hearer of the word. When you read it, you apply it to your life. Otherwise, you're deceiving your own self. James 1.25 goes on to say, But whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in his deed. James tells us to look at the perfect law of liberty. Guys, you know what? Every one of God's laws, every precept, every principle that's in that Bible, every one of them is in there for your own good. Every one of them for your own good. If you will apply these things to your life, your life will be a hundredfold better than what it is right now. James 1.27 goes on to say, Pure religion and undefiled for God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and their widows in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. It says we're to help the fatherless and the widows. Guys, listen. Every one of us, you need to find a charity. It, and it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I have several charities that I love, Compassion Radio. I've been with them for years. They smuggle Bibles into China. World Missions, uh, 
feed starving people in India. Anything you can give that helps starving children and widows, if you give it to God, He will bless you. And he says, don't let the world rub off on you. Do not let the world rub off on you. The world rubs off on you in one of three ways. And we talked about this many times. People, other people bring the world into your life. Places, places you should not go. And things things that bring the world into your life. Guys, go read the book of James, but especially this first chapter, and go over the stuff we just went over. Because people, every single thing on this list is things that I need to work on. And if I need to work on them, there's a slight, slight possibility that you might need to work on them too. Anyway, repent. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do that, you will live on into eternity. If you don't, you won't. It's that simple. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.